Hey, Chris with New England Scrambler here. I'm guessing the same as most of you. I'm spending a good deal of my COVID winter here thinking about spring and planning for some great adventures and camping in the upcoming year. I've been looking at a number of different tent options to replace an old uh, car tent that I've had for a very, very long time, like 30 years, and started looking at the Lone Rider Adventure Tent. Um, and this is going to be an unboxing and first impressions video of that tent. All right, so one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that um, they've uh, anticipated that we will be using knives to cut into boxes as people often do and uh, have included a little bit of protection to prevent you from puncturing the tent which is great when you're buying soft goods online and don't know quite how it's going to be uh, packaged. Also picking up on the, um, the pretty cool packaging with the uh, emergency hazard um, symbol on it to I think this can be used as sort of a, a you know emergency cue or something if you're stuck on the side of the road and need reflective which is pretty cool. Now that the uh, packaging has magically disappeared and get a closer look at the storage bag for this which is pretty awesome I love it it's got a uh, a roll top dry bag that it comes packaged into which ought to make it really easy to pack away and another thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that you've got multiple sets of loops for tying this down on the bike itself uh, so it should be no problem whatsoever um, getting that thing strapped uh, wherever you need to on the uh, on the bike and then a final thing here is you got a couple of a set of cinch straps for tying this down compression straps uh, to make it a little bit easier to uh, get everything all in a nice tight bundle once uh, once you're ready to pack it up. Right, I've got to give myself just a little bit more space here before I bust into the uh, next part and see what's inside. Let's take a look. All right off, um, looks like we got some uh, instructions on the inside of the packaging. Take a look at that here a little bit more in a minute. See what we got here in the bundle. So it looks like we've got what is this? Um, a bag with a canvas on the back, mesh on the front. We have our I'm guessing this is the rain fly. Yeah. Um, where's the ground cloth? I don't know. Well, that would be, I believe, the ground cloth, which, if I'm not mistaken, has a pretty cool feature here as well, if I can find it. This handy little SOS um, on the back of the underside of the ground cloth. Now, one thing I've seen in other videos, and I'm not entirely sure what the point up here, is this whole need help, yes, no. Uh, I mean, I'm assuming if you're flying out the SOS flag, uh, you probably do need help, and this just seems extremely confusing and redundant, but, um, you know, I suppose you could always just cover it up or color it out. Um, anyway, so that's the ground cloth. It looks like on the base there are a bunch of uh, metal points, attachment points to put the, uh, the tent stakes into to hold the whole thing together. Initial impressions here on the stitching is that it uh, seems to be very good quality. The materials seem to be solid. Uh, I don't have any concern about that tearing even with a, a pretty good pull or some heavy force applied to it. The stitching around the ground cloth itself reasonably good and the materials are solid you know this is a it would take some doing to to put a hole in that 
I think it should hold up to quite a bit. So next up, take a look at some of these pieces and parts that are in the, the uh, thing itself. This, I don't know what this is. This looks like, oh, it looks like a, some sort of, oh, and we get a marker. Uh, not sure exactly what the, I think the marker, oh yeah, for the, for the um, marking on the, the graphic on the outside. And this metal piece, I'm not entirely sure what it's for, but these look like um, patch um, pieces. So different materials that look like they go to different parts of the, the tent um, itself based on the colors. So now we've got the uh, poles, which also, I, I love this. Um, first of all, the, the poles are in a really solid, uh, packaging with um, uh, some significant padding at both ends. So if you're concerned about the poles wearing through like a, a cheap tent bag, I'll tell you what, this is one thing that makes it obvious that whoever designed this kit is in fact, I mean, other than the, the name, um, does in fact ride motorcycles and does travel and camp with them because uh, normally, you know, it's only a few companies I've seen make a good tent pole bag that, that'll hold up to sustained vibration. Uh, Moscow Moto being one, I have one of their um, their tent pole uh, bags, but this will should do just just fine based on what I'm saying here. Uh, pretty heavy duty. The minute the center part is a little bit less um, less thick, less reinforced, but again, very cool that they also have the uh, loops to attach on the tent bag uh, tent pole bag itself, so that you can attach it separately without having to roll it up inside the tent. And before I move on to taking a look at the other um, pieces of the tent, I wanna just pop this bag open and see what it looks like inside, what we got for the poles. Okay, so one thing I'm noticing right off the bat is that there is another sort of separate pocket in the front here that has uh, tent stakes. Oh, this is awesome. So these are, um, you know, anybody who's ever bought a tent from, from pretty much anywhere is probably used to seeing the uh, ultra low quality garbage tent stakes that come with the come with the uh, tent. They're just the typical L-shaped metal silver things that bend the second you try to put them in anything other than um, <laughs> well, other than the kind of ground that they won't stay in anyway, and uh, are a real pain. These look to be much higher quality. They are uh, also um, Lone Rider branded tent stakes um, of a good, uh, appears to be good quality aluminum. Um, I've just got four here, but I can feel a couple more floating around in this front pocket, um, which by the way, it does not go the full length of the top of the, uh, of the pocket. It just comes to about uh, here. So you shouldn't have to fish too much to get them all out. All right, so as I suspected, there were more than four tent stakes, and uh, it looks like, as one would expect from assembling a tent in the order of operations, that the uh, tent stakes should probably come out of the bag last. It would make your life a lot easier uh, if you actually take the poles out first. So, all right, now let's take a look at this uh, tent pole setup. By the way, I do really like that the Velcro, I mean, as one would expect, folds down over and covers both the pockets well and secures everything that's inside. You can hear the little bit of crinkliness here. That's the extra thick um, reinforcement and padding on the inside of the tent pole bag here. Um, it's it's a little bit more heavy duty material, kind of almost tarp, uh, tarp material on the insides. So that really should prevent some of the any pole vibration issues um, and, and get coming through the thing. So let's see here. pull out the stakes. Now I am, am not going to try to assemble this in my living room uh, just now. I'll probably wait until spring rolls around and then do a, a full actual setup and you know interior look video. But uh, from just initial impressions I'm trying to see here, it looks like this whole thing is all set up as one continuous unit. There aren't separate components to pull apart. Um, that should, I'm guessing, make it 
a little bit easier to throw together because you're not going to have to sit there uh, and figure out what connects to what and where and, and, and everything. Um, it looks pretty straightforward. I've seen it set up a couple of times by other people. It doesn't seem like it's that much of a mind bender. So I'm pretty psyched about this overall. It definitely looks like somebody really thought through carefully you know, how do you package something up in the most easy to throw up in, in a couple minutes sort of way. One other thing I would note, now I'm putting everything back away. I put in the steaks first, which definitely seems to be the way to go. Um, I am noticing right off the bat though, that there's gonna be a little bit of fiddling around that's gonna need to happen with the poles themselves to get them to settle in such a way, especially with these, these three-way connector pieces. Um, it can create some bulk around the top. So you have to mess around and figure out what's the best way to put that all together so that you can actually get the Velcro back. Right now I'm sort of stretching to do it. Now following up on that last point a bit about compactness, I was a little concerned when I saw the size of the tent and the box looked bigger than I expected in, in the bag. Um, you know, not materially so, but I was wondering if it would pack down lighter. And just judging that the core of the tent poles is a pretty substantial piece of this, I can see how you could definitely fold this down you know, or pack it in some way, shape, or form into a, a much smaller compression sack than what um, what it originally came in. Probably take up about, oh, I don't know, half, a third of the size of the original bag if you compressed it down really well. So that should give you a lot more compactness, especially if you travel with the poles in a separate, uh, in, in the separate packaging or in say like a Moscow Moto tent pull bag. All right, now I'm gonna take a quick look at the fabrics and the, uh, the rest of the tent. This, um, from what I've seen, is a uh, mesh pocket that can be attached to the, the roof of the tent and uh, used to store things up on, the, up on top. Uh, it's pretty well made, actually. This is uh, in pretty good shape. It looks like it'll hold up to a decent amount. It's not super, super uh, cheap, kind of lightweight. Uh, mosquito netting material, if you will. It's a little bit more heavy duty than that. So the next bit here is the rain fly, the, um, the more olive green colored material here. Um, it's, it's got the other end of these attachment points. They're all aluminum that hook onto the base of the tent and, and attached to the tent. These buckles uh, for adjustment on the straps and the loops, they're all a nice sturdy plastic. I don't have any concerns about these things. They look like they'll hold up pretty well for what they're intended to do. Uh, again, again, all the stitching that I'm seeing is looks really solid and the materials feel good. This is a you know, decently made product here. I wouldn't have any concerns about its durability whatsoever based on what I'm seeing. One thing that I'm noticing as I'm looking at this uh, is that the, uh, the rain fly itself is, is super heavy duty. Uh, and, and actually a little heavy. So if you're going for like the lightest weight option available on the market, this may not be your choice, but for me, this is perfect. I'd rather have a little bit more heavy duty quality because I have a tendency to bumble into things with sharp objects and uh, would rather not have to replace an expensive tent at some point. Uh, although it does cover the entire tent, which is explains part of the weight. It's not just a like a peak thing. It, it covers the whole thing all the way around. Um, it's probably heavier than the base part of the tent itself. They're, they're similar in weight. Uh, this is probably a little bit heavier. Other thing that I would take a look at here is just the, uh, the quality of the seams is great. This actually feels extremely well made all the way around. The materials are great. I haven't seen again, any mistakes in the stitching, any tears, any loose threads coming out. Uh, overall, it looks to be in very solid shape and it should hold up to quite a bit. Then the final piece, I suppose, would be the actual tent base itself, if you will. The uh, material is is uh, not quite the same as the Rainfly. There's a, a bit of a difference in texture. But again, it feels high quality. Feels like it'll hold up very well. I'm not seeing any issues with any of the stitching or attachment points. And I could really pull on that and it's it's gonna hold in place uh, more so than really you'd need it to. And the thing that I was, I really wanted to check are a couple pieces here. Number one is the, the plastic clips that hook onto the, um, that hook onto the poles and hold the tent in place. I will say if, if I had one 
One thought about where there might be some issues, potential breakage, it would probably be on these clips just due to the design. I, mean, I haven't seen anybody comment about that or, or complain about it, um, but it seems like out of the whole tent, these are probably the, the most um, lightweight plastic pieces, probably the, the most flimsy out of everything. But again, they're just to hold the, uh, the mesh part of the tent up to the poles. They aren't really going to be super, you know, load bearing, at least that's not the intent. Um, but hopefully you can kind of see the general construction of the pieces here. It's a little thin on the, where the attachment points are. Just molded plastic. So I'd say be careful when you're clipping them on to the tent poles and uh, don't pile up your tent and jump up and down on it because you probably snap something here. Other than that, you should be more or less fine. Zippers themselves, I can't tell uh, what, how well those will hold up. They look a little bit on the cheaper end as far as the, the zipper part. Um, as far as the, the teeth go, I mean, it looks pretty good. I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't see any major issues here. But I think if there's, if there's maybe another thing I would, I would look at a little carefully, it just might be the, uh, the durability of the zippers. It's kind of hard to tell how well that'll hold up over time. Uh, one final thought here is I'm um, trying to put this all back together. And a couple good things to note is that the, the base and the rain fly, although the rain fly is kind of globe shaped, um, is actually symmetrical. So you can pretty easily fold it over on itself, um, you know, once double it up, triple it up, and, and then roll it up pretty easily uh, to get it all back together. All right, so just to wrap up here, that's my overall impression of the Lone Rider ADV tent. Is uh, It's a great product, seems to be high, very high quality, very well made. I'm really looking forward to actually trying it out, setting it up uh, come the spring and seeing how it performs on the road in real life conditions. But from what I've seen so far, good product uh, and I really recommend it. So thanks everybody for your time and uh, appreciate you checking it out. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. I will occasionally post more content. And like I said, keep uh, posted in the, in the spring for an uh, actual setup and product review once I've had a chance to use this tent a few times on some actual trips. All right, thanks everybody and have a great, uh, hopefully much better improved uh, 2021. Oh, hey, and just a uh, bonus thing here. While I was uh, in the process of wrapping and packing everything up, my wife walked in and told me I got a package from uh, Amazon. And what's uh, super psyched, because this is uh, Tim Collins' book, uh, The uh, Fundamentals of Motorcycle Camping, which I have been looking forward to getting my hands on and reading ever since he announced he was writing it last year. And uh, yeah, so I've got my winter reading cut out for me. And by the way, if you haven't checked out uh, Tim Collins site or aware of it, FTA Adventures on YouTube. Uh, please, I highly recommend that you go check that out. He does some awesome stuff, awesome gear reviews, uh, traveling around the U.S. national parks, some of the, the most uh, cool scenery and just overall soothing and relaxing videos uh, from a motorcycle travel perspective you can watch on YouTube. Uh, great way to get through the winter, great way to get through, well, all of 2020 for that matter. Uh, highly recommend it. Again, that's uh, Tim Collins at FTA Adventures, and I will uh, link to his YouTube in the description and above.